Hey everyone, Darwin's Guide here. What are the limits of science? If this box is everything, how much of it is described by natural laws? How much of it is described by science? Francis Bacon was for me the father of modern science, and he really wanted us to describe things in terms of natural laws. But he also knew that there were limits. There were limits to natural laws. There were limits to science. He would have said something like this. Today we know it's probably something more like this. Science doesn't describe that much of everything. But there are zombie scientists out there who hold this kind of a view. Science describes pretty much everything. I have a little black sliver here in the lower right. Maybe there's something. Maybe at the Big Bang there's something that wasn't explained. Although many scientists are saying even that is explained by natural laws. Everything is explained by natural laws. You can go back to Pierre Laplace a couple hundred years ago, the great French scientist who held this kind of a view. Everything it runs according to natural laws. There's nothing else. Today, Brian Green, professor at Columbia University, and many others hold this kind of a view. Let's have a listen to what Green says. We are physics that is manifested in a highly coordinated manner. And that's really the only distinguishing characteristic of us compared to the uh, inanimate objects in the world. Okay, we are physics that is manifested in a highly coordinated manner. That's the only thing that differentiates us from inorganic matter. Hmm. Green is obviously over on this side of the spectrum. Pretty much everything is described by natural law and science. Sabine Hassenfelder, another zombie scientist who holds this kind of a view, here's a blog she wrote about this determinism. Everything is determined. Here's the key quote. The whole story of the universe in every single detail was determined already at the Big Bang. We are just watching it play out. So Hassenfelder also believes that natural law and science explain everything. The problem is there just isn't any scientific evidence for this. It goes against the scientific evidence. Here's that image that she had. Take a look at these gears. It's a real gearhead, right? You have this figure with the gears running inside the head. In other words, determinism. Even your thoughts are determined. And they were determined ever since the Big Bang billions of years ago. Okay, now let's have a look at, at, at the evidence because there is no scientific evidence for this. Here's kind of a typical textbook illustration of vision and how vision works, the sensory perception of vision. So you've got the image here in the lower left, the letter A is coming into the eye, it uh, hits the retina, it gets translated into electrical signals which are sent in the optic nerve, they go up into the brain and then the this figure kind of shows uh, an A being projected and then you have this dot 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 and then that last A there is representing your conscious sensory perception of it. Okay, a nice figure, but this is wrong. We have to make sure we understand these are electrical signals going through the optic nerve. You don't have an A projected. It's not like there's some sort of a projector screen in your brain. It's not like there's image information or some sort of a, these aren't like optical images being projected through the optic nerve. It doesn't work that way. It's electricity. There is no A projected in your brain. How does the electricity get translated into our conscious sensory perception. How are you looking at this right now? How are you hearing me right now? Contemporary science does not explain that. There are no natural laws. There's no known natural processes to explain any of this. There's no evidence for this. So there are a lot of things that natural laws do not explain. The origin of life, the origin of species, good and evil, consciousness, thought, and yes, sensory perception. You know, even evolutionists agree with this. This is what's really funny about this. Uh, here's a leading evolutionist from about 50 years ago, Theodosius Dobzhansky. Evolutionary events are, quote, unique, unrepeatable, and irreversible. Unrepeatable, unique. They don't follow natural laws. Here's another uh, leading evolutionist, again, Ernst Meyer. Laws and experiments are inappropriate techniques for explaining evolutionary events. Laws are inappropriate. Okay, one more. Stephen Jay Gould, wind back the tape of life. Let it play again 
from an identical starting point, and the chance becomes vanishingly small that anything like human intelligence would grace the replay. It's not going to happen the same way. Even evolutionists are saying this doesn't make any sense. Determinism doesn't make sense. Now, they may be wrong. They may be right. I'm not saying everything they say is right. I'm simply saying there's no scientific evidence for determinism. There are all kinds of phenomena not explained by natural laws, not explained by science. Those who say otherwise are zombie scientists.